Okay, so to make it actually work, we need to do one thing in the dot .h of the main view controller. And that is to put an outlet, and you'll see why later, of a UI view controller, and I'm just going to call it view controller. So that's, that's all we need to do with that. This basically allows us, if we're going to have more than one view, uh, more than two views actually, to um, push and expand lots of different views without having to write one block of like code for each view. So all we have to do is in the press button function, we put the this calling of the function in. We just have to make sure that the view controller becomes equal to second view sit because we want it to push the second view. Now, if we build and run, it should expand into the second view. There we go. We need to make it go back now. So the way we want it to shrink back is to take the code for the view will appear, which is here. Copy and paste that into the main.m. If we save and run, it just that single line of code will now make it shrink. The problem is we had pop view controller animated, yes, so it will move as well as shrink. And obviously that looks a bit weird. So to change up, second.m change this to no build and run now and it should basically be the final product there we go now that was pretty easy to implement and that's pretty neat so I'm now you, you can stop here if that's all you're going to do but I'm now going to show you how you can add another view and how easy it is to use another view in the uh, shrinking and growing and there might be a few other little lessons learned along the way like to do with button tags and switch statements so you might want to keep watching so now we need to do exactly what we did with the second view which is add a new UI view controller subclass I'm going to call it third view and we need to set up the view controller exactly the same way that means a class of third view an outlet of third view I'll call this one third VC and a property of third view. Because of the property, like we did before, we need to import third view .h and synthesize the third view controller, which I call third VC. Now, that's what we need to do code-wise. Again, we've got to do the view controller in the XIB of the main uh, view. Drag on a view controller in the nib name, third view, in the class, third view. Files owner, connections, drag third VC onto the third view. You can save and close it. Now what we need to do is make two buttons in the main uh, .xib so that we can go to both views. Now, we don't want to have to make a different button um, property, uh, sorry, uh, action for each button. It'd be much more efficient to have one action we can assign to all the buttons. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. In the main.h, after press button, put a colon and open brackets, type id, close brackets, and type sender. And then in the dot .m, make the same changes here. This will allow us to assign the same action to loads of different buttons, but we'll know which one has clicked it. So go back into the main XIB, and if we click Files Owner, you'll see that that old action's greyed out. So close that, or we'll delete that. Make a new button called Go to Third View. Click Files Owner and drag the new action onto both buttons. Choose touch up inside for both. The way we're going to work out which button is pressed is by using the tag property. So click a button, go to the first tab here, and find where it says tag. This one I've given a tag of 2 because it's going to be going to second view. And this one we're going to give a tag of 3 because it's going to be going to the third view. If you want, you could give each one a different outlet, but and see how to do this in the uh, instructions file but this is much easier so they've got the tag set up now 
All we need to do is find out which tag it was. So to do this, one line of code, UI button, give it a name, say button pressed, equals open brackets, UI button, space asterisk close brackets, sender, semicolon. So now we know which button's been pressed, and we can use the tag property. So if button press dot tag is two, we want this to happen. Else, so now we can copy and paste this. If it's three, we want this to become equal to third BC. Okay, and that's one way to do it, like that. So now let me build and run it. And it should expand into both views. We won't be able to get back of the third view. And there isn't anything on it. So that's what we've got to sort out. Open the third view.xib. First of all, we're going to put a label on it, calling it third view, so we can see it's a third view. So find a label. Third view. Let's change the colors a bit. And then we need a button. We can copy and paste everything from the second view here. So the action and the actual function. If we go back, we can drag the action onto the button now and select touch up inside. Save, close it and build and run. And we now should have a fully working expanding and shrinking views application. There you go. That was pretty easy. So to go over that again, if you want to add a new view, you have to do all the standard stuff you'd have to do anyway if it was a simple navigation-based application. It's just a pop view controller, which is the standard stuff. The only thing you have to add to make the navigation, sorry, the animation work is this. And that's really minimal. Now I said I was going to show you how to use a switch statement instead. If you're going to have more than just two, it's going to be much easier to do the following. And this is equivalent to the if statement. Switch button press dot tag. Basically that means if button press dot tag. Case if it's two, do this. And if it's three, do this. It looks better than uh, lots of if else ifs. And break basically means yeah, just stop. So it doesn't if it if you don't know break it will do all the code following that. We're not gonna have a default, so you can get rid of that. And I'll just show you that works exactly the same. There we go, it still works. So that is it. Now I'll just quickly show you these defines. If you want the time, if you want it to take more time, you put that up. If you want it to be bigger when it just disappears, then you can put that up. So I've done that now, so it should take it should be slower and it should disappear when it's bigger. So it shouldn't shrink as much, if you see. There we go. Now I think the Facebook app is I think it's probably about 0.4. Uh theirs is pretty quick and it's probably about it's probably about this setting, but you can play around with it and get what you want. Um, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty quick. But you you can see my instructions here. These two have to be different, even if it's just by 0 0.0000001, 0, 0, 0, 0, whatever. And these two have to end in an F, and this doesn't. If not, it's not going to work. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Um, I'll just leave you again with, this is what we've done. We've worked out how to do a simple navigation-based application. We've learned switch statements, tags, and above all, this shrinking and growing animation, which is pretty cool. So if you need any help, you have any problems, you want to make any improvements, please just leave comments in this video. And um, thank you for watching my first tutorial. Check back for more soon. Please visit my website at abgapps.co.uk where you can see the apps we've got on the App Store, what we're working on. And thank you very much.